YouTube, what's up? Like many of you, your endgame sorceress build is an ES Nova Sork wielding infinity. You have a big mana pool, insight on your merc. Your merc is a prayer merc to double synergize with meditation for the mana and prayer to heal you even when you're poisoned. With Sunder Charms, this build is the meta build. Non-ladder, this is still good, but you do run into some issues. The only thing you have to worry about is the blood mana curse, right? Wrong. I'll go over the gear and the skill points used in the build. I'll show you some examples of how you can deal with this curse and dealing with other dreaded monsters in the game. Timestamps and links will be in the description below. All right, first, so I'll go over the gear that I'm using on this ES Nova Sork. Infinity in a scythe. I have one that is minus 50 to enemy lightning resist. It goes up to 55, but this is non-ladder. I have a Griffin's Eye with minus 24 and plus 18 to lightning skills and with a 5-5 five five facet in it. A Mara's with 30 all res. Res is not super important on an ES build. Skin of the Viper Magi, not upped. I could up it if I want, but then I would lose the ability to use it on slightly lower level characters and it has a facet in it that a random facet i had which was minus four plus three i have ethereal sandstorm treks which gives me the lower strength requirement of 81 10 faster cast rate ring with 19 strength again the 19th strength is huge to save points to put into mana cold resist not that important but poison length reduced by 25 percent pretty decent and then this the sandstorms also gives me 43 poison res Poison Res is the only resist that is important in an ES build, but not super important with Prayer Mer. Arachnid's Mesh, Stone of Jordan, and Matrix. And then I have Lightning Skillers with various amounts of life on them. So all Lightning Skillers with life, all sort of random. I have a 2019-10 Annie, a 19-19 Torch, and then all... Mana charms at the bottom, 17s, 16, 16, 15 with hit recovery, which I think gets me over the 30 breakpoint, 17, 17, and Fester on walk in 16. So a bunch of mana charms at the bottom for extra big mana pool. And then on swap, I have a 262 CTA and lidless wall the reason for lidless wall is because i don't have strength to wear a spirit so for my character i have just enough strength to wear the boots and then everything else into energy and then for the skill tree i have three hard points into frozen armor i use it just in case for the protection but i just threw my extra points that i had left over in there then for the lightning tree i have telekinesis maxed out one point into teleport energy shield maxed out right now it's at absorb 93 if i do battle orders it would be 94 and if i took off my haradra cube i could have it 95 but it's not super important one point into these synergies here to get down to energy shield maxed out lightning mastery one point into thunderstorm it does decent damage when you're just kind of passive and then max out nova and max out nova's synergy which is static field static field is nice when it's super maxed out because you can do like almost the entire screen and then some so for players eight or higher difficulties using static first a bit and then doing Nova really speeds up your kill speed. Then for fire skills, one into warmth to help boost your mana recovery, also with the mercenary. And then one point into fire mastery to boost the damage on the hydras that I have mapped from the torch. This is in a case where it's a lightning immune monster that I can't break. And then I throw down some hydras to help my merc. And then for my mercenary setup, he's using Andarials with an 15 increase attack speed jewel and fire resist, sacred armor fortitude with the second highest life roll, and then a insight and a thresher for 17 meditation to boost your mana recovery. And then he is a prayer merc. Prayer is great for keeping your life up if you get poisoned. So poison is really no longer an issue with this setup. So your life isn't an issue and mana is not an issue because you have such fast regen. You'll never run out of mana. It's a super strong build. All right, so here we are in the Crystalline Passage. We're gonna try and be, uh, trying to find some things to give us the Blood Mana Curse and I'll show you how you can get rid of it easily. Let's get cursed. That time didn't work. See when you get cursed. As you can see, the uh, mana pool went down a little bit there, but still not that big of an issue. Let's 
see if I can just tank these. So pretty much nothing can hurt you. Let's see if we can get blood monikers here. Yes. So if I just hold this down and just like not worry about it. Look, it goes away. When you try and kill yourself, it goes away and then you can give yourself a, a pot. So, Hakuna Matata style, have you just tried not worrying about it when you get the blood monikers? And I know a lot of people are afraid of it because if you're a high level character, you don't want to die. I get it. Let's see if we can get cursed. There, boom. Let's go. Let's try and... Let's try and just not worry about it. Let's see if we can die. Curse is gone. So, the reason why I found this out is because I'm a level 99, and I don't care if I die now. So, I tried to kill myself with the blood mana curse. I'm like, okay, let's see how bad this is. And as soon as you get down to the bottom, the curse goes away. So, if you have... If you have that curse on you and you just don't worry about it, blast the guys away. Let's see. Good. All right. Let's just not worry about it. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I might die. I might die. I might die. And it's gone. Curse is gone. And now I can give myself a pot and I'm all set. So to me... I was super worried about the blood mana curse before. Obviously, being a high level, you definitely do not want to die. But now that I've tested this, the blood mana curse is not even a problem. And if you have a Act 5 Merc, right, with a, a Plague on Ladder, yeah, it's got the Cleansing Aura, but that probably takes some time to get rid of it. You can get rid of it by just trying to kill yourself. Going all the way down, the game will not let you kill yourself with the blood mana curse. And then the curse goes away. So if you're afraid of if you're if you're slightly afraid, let's say, okay. So I go away from some some monsters, I go away. Yeah, okay, my life is going down. The guys are dead. I need mana. Let's get rid of the curse. And we're good. So you can easily do that. So there we go. Blood Mana Curse solved. Not really an issue. Especially when like you get cursed and then you just keep attacking and you kill the guys. And just again, Hakuna Matata, not worry about it at all. You're fine. Alright, so this time for Bale, I'm going to try and die. If I get cursed, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to continue to attack. Uh, but if I do die, I'll show you a little secret about dying. Blood Mana Curse is on. Perfect. Oops. Static him. Just play like it's not there. So I played like it wasn't there. Didn't lose my... Energy shield, life went down, but it wasn't an issue. And then if I try and kill myself, I lose the blood mana curse. So if you just don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try and die. I'm not going to cast anything. I'm just going to go in here and die, and I'll show you a little secret about death. Let's just try and die. Death takes a toll of 20,000 gold. Obviously, online, if you leave and exit the game, your corpse is right there. I did lose all those pots. I probably should have went in and got them, but no matter. 
I'm not going to resurrect my Merc for this, but I'm going to do the same thing and purposely don't cast anything and die. You have died. You have lost experience, but I'm a level 99, so I don't have any experience. But as you see, there is no death toll money because I have no money. So if you don't have any gold on you, so if you don't have any gold on you and you don't have any gold in your personal stash, they won't take any gold. So you can have all your gold in your shared stashes. And if you die, they won't take your gold. Pretty simple. So we'll try and find some dolls here to kind of show how they're not scary with an ES. So here's some dolls. So dolls are scary because when you kill the doll and it's next to you, it can do, it does like a little corpse explosion and it does some damage to you based on their life. And if you're, if dolls are sort of amped up, uh, they can potentially give give deadly strike and do double damage. Uh, GGM has a video explaining all of the damage for these Stygian dolls. Go watch that video. But for this build, again, if you just if you're teleporting around as a Sork, just don't kill them. Like, they, they don't do much damage to you. Even with energy shield, they're not going to pop on you. So, like, they don't do much damage to you at all. But I'll show you if I find a group, I will do Nova, and you'll see. Like, even popping them, they don't... Like, I'm popping them right next to me, and they're no issue. So I know that's scary. Here they are, right? Not an issue. So very safe. Let's see if we can find some more. Yeah, so I'm popping them right next to me and you can see the mana pool doesn't really move. Here's a bunch. Pop them all. So there, my mana pool went down maybe a thousand. So having more than 3,000 in your mana pool is a huge boost. So yeah, if my mana pool was only a thousand, then potentially I would lose my energy shield once it goes down, and then I'd only have 900 hit points left. Here's some more dolls. Pop it right next to me. Lost maybe 500 life or 500 mana. But nothing, nothing crazy. So very tanky build and not very scary at all. Dolls, not an issue. So here's a trav run, another potential dangerous spot because of all the hydras. Hydras won't do much damage versus an energy shield. And I'll probably kill all the monsters before my Merc even takes any heat. So yeah, super easy. And then there's one more. So yeah, hyd hydras don't hurt you. So your merc can survive, and you survive. So another potential scary spot for the Sork is the one of the seal bosses. The seal boss here on the right. So let's just aggro it and see how scary it is. So the guys in here will do a lot of fire damage. So I'm amped up too, so let's just see. Tele into them. So they're really not doing much damage to me at all. My Merc is surviving. 
So my mana pool went pretty far down there because I think they have some sort of mana burn, but uh, not particularly fast scary. So you can uh, stay on top of it if you see your mana pool getting that low, but otherwise not super scary. All right. Energy shield takes a lot of damage. But you wouldn't ever just be really standing here like this. But but yeah, I was amped up as well as just standing there not doing any damage. The Sace is sometimes scary for some Tele Stomp style builds like the Hammered in. So let's just try it with the Sork. So I didn't stand there and try to get hit, but not a scary moment. There's really no scary moments with this, this build. Amped up here. Let's see if we can find some souls of those guys. So those guys, again, are scary because they do kind of explode on you, but with energy shield, it's kind of no issue. You can take the damage from these guys. So there's some souls. So souls kind of cut out your, your mana if you're not careful. Let's see if we can find some more souls. But... If, if you're aggressively attacking, souls are not scary. Let's see if we can find more. So here's some souls. So, like, you can take out souls pretty quick. They are immune to lightning, but infinity breaks their immunity. So souls, not really an issue. So yeah, that's it. This build is super strong, very tanky, and dolls, ghosts, and the Blood Mana Curse aren't a problem. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to do so below. And thanks for watching. Bye.